Hello, this is Francis from uh, McCaffrey's Crafts and just managing to get a few minutes to myself to enjoy a cup of tea. So uh, I thought I'd make just, uh, just a quick uh, quick video, just whatever kind of random thoughts are, are in my head today. And uh, today I kind of want to talk about how you should buy with a registered business um, when you're buying a black tron shillelagh. Um, by buying with a registered uh, business, you know, who pay all their taxes, who are above board, you have plenty of all your consumer rights um, as well when you buy from from a, a real, real seller. And uh, I think it's important just to kind of highlight, um, you know, this because like the more sellers and companies that survive the pandemic and will um you know continue on from years to years it's going to inspire more it's going to develop the industry like what what i would like at the moment in ireland there's only there's only literally a handful of us who are registered businesses you know we have companies we have physical stores we sell the black torn we we pay all of our you know customs vats VAT taxes everything you need to know we have our accountants we have we have all of all of these things because we're we have businesses and we've made the black torn shillelagh making into a business which is really important because like um you know at the moment like you know you just have a flood of people making black torn and selling it for next to nothing and thinking they're amazing because they sold two sticks in a week and you know when you have a business like you know, I I don't mind people getting involved and and doing it as a hobby, and I'd I'd love to, uh, to answer questions and and help people. But like when they start thinking that they want to start selling professionally, and then they they you know they you know they can cut into the business of those other uh, big sellers such as such as myself, or there's a, there's another guy, and uh, there's there's about like there's a hand as I said there's about a handful of us in Ireland and. We all work really hard to to get this this black torn business and shillelagh making going, and uh, you know like because it's it's one of those old professions like stick making and shillelagh making. It was something people did ages ago. You know you had faction fighting. You had you know most people are in rural Ireland would have black torn walking sticks. There's a load of prestige and history and folklore all around, and that reminds me actually I, I must make a video on folklore as well. I know I know Joe has asked me. Uh, to to do that, I just just kind of thought of it in, in one of my random thoughts. So, the thing is, uh, when you buy from a registered business, you are supporting Irish crafts. You are supporting the the longevity of this industry as well. Um, you know, you have your rights as well as a consumer when you buy something online. You know, you have you know your thirty days to send it back, get a full refund. You know, even I do longer if, if you know, if, if it's too short. Like, usually what, why people will send it back is, like, they'll just get the measurements wrong. Because sometimes it's hard. Like, you know, you just, you never know until you have the sticks. And there's never any problem with sending it back. And, you know, straight away, I'll I'll refund you or something like that. Sometimes big heavy guys will get a really lighter stick or some person wants a lighter stick and they get a heavier stick. So usually that's kind of the, the typical thing that, that happens. But, um, you know, when you buy from... You know, from someone like myself or one of the other, you know, two or three companies that that's, you know, I use work companies lightly. We're all kind of like just small little little family businesses that are trying to, to, to keep going. But, you know, you're, you're helping, helping a lot. Like, you know, when you see these guys selling, you know, a, a stick that they made and they're they're selling them really cheap and they're, they're you know, they're just getting going. They're, they're just kind of new into the industry. And like, that's how everyone kind of gets started and stuff. But mostly these guys, they're gone after a year. They they appear out of nowhere and they have usually a piece of land and they manage to cut, you know, maybe 100, 200 sticks from their piece of land. They make the sticks, usually not fully seasoned. And then after about a year or two, they're gone. You know, when they have to go out and start cutting and finding black turn and doing that, the hard work, that's then when they're like, yeah, this, this, this business isn't for me. It was kind of handy when, like, if you have... If you find a good black thorn bush and they're rare, you know, one that's overgrown, you can get like a bunch of hundred sticks out of it and you think it's brilliant and they're all easy to get because you have easy access on your land, you know, you're right beside your home, very easy sticks. And that's usually how, how people get, get involved. Then they sell them all and then they're like, what do I do next? <laughs> which, which can be quite tough. So 
this just kind of cup of tea drinking is just me just giving my thoughts on on uh, you know buying which registered business buying legal black thorn you know not supporting the the illegal trade of of uh, you know illegal black thorn sellers I suppose that are, are uh, you know they they're just you know you, you you with with them you just have to be careful and the only reason I mention is that I was talking to to a guy uh, there earlier today and he was having some problems. Um, with someone that he had bought it with directly, I think it was through through Facebook, and uh, you know you don't have much rights when you buy something through Facebook, and having the rant and giving out and and everything, and um, you know he's contacted me just for to get advice. Like you know I, I get the strangest the requests for people just asking me random random pieces of advice. You know what next relationship advice or something like imagine that Shalili Maker gives his thoughts on relationships. Stay with her or leave with her. Let's you know, twirl the shillelagh around and see which direction it lands. Who knows, like, but anyway. Mm. So like, you know, when you're buying stuff, yeah, you have to be very careful. Um, authentic black thorn. Like, there's guys out there that make fantastic imitation black thorns. Like, you know, there's, there's the company everyone knows, Cold Steel, that makes fantastic plastic imitation shillelaghs. Um, for me, an imitation shillelagh is something that's not 100% black thorn. And there's lovely imitations out there with cardigan handles attached. Like sometimes you'll see a perfect type of shillelagh and there's about 20 or 30 of them all, all together in the seller selling them as well. Like the, what you'll find is the handles there, they're made from beach usually. Um, they're, they're done by wood turners. Then they use like a kind of female and male end, like what's called a tendon. And they were just attached into the wood and, and screwed on. And the biggest sign is you see the black paint on the um, shillelagh is right up to the handle. Whenever you see, look, I, I might do a video on that so before about, um, like, there's nothing wrong with a very good imitation. Like, say, for example, are you guys into watches? Like, you know, imagine, like, there, you know, if you ever go to, to Asia or, or to Thailand places, they have, like, these watch markets and you can get, like, a grade A imitation, grade B. Well, there are what I call grade A imitation shillelaghs out there you know they might like just like one of those grade 8 rolex part of it is actually from various bits and pieces of a rolex some of it does contain parts but the rest of it doesn't and they look pretty good they're obviously not the completely the same people are happy to do them but you know if you compare that to a real omega you know and then you have a grade a rolex you cannot compare that to a real Omega watch or something like that, you know, and there's there's Casios in the market and there's there's all different kind of uh, Seikos and, you know, all these different watchmakers out there, you know, just to kind of give a, a kind of comparison bit, bit between the both. But like, so imitation black thorns are out there. Um, you know, anything that's not 100% black thorn and someone's calling it a black thorn shillelagh. Um, it's, you know, for me as, as, as a purist, it's, it's not what I would like to see out there like there's nothing wrong with saying this is a you know a, a black thorn shaft that has a beach handle on it as well as i said most of it is like beech wood which is uh, another kind of hardwood that they attach the handles with which is fine i don't mind i don't mind it but all i'm just saying is that technically it's an imitation black thorn technically i'm correct i'm not you know uh, taking away from the hard work that that's you go out and you have to cut a shaft you have to season it for two years. You have to get all the parts and pieces. You have to drill into it. You have to have to, you know, just, to, you know, just like sticking two pieces together. You know, there's, I suppose there's skill, skill in, in that as well. But like the, the real skill is in the handle. Like you have to be able to go out into the wild, you know, spot what's a handle, uh, carve a handle out. Everything's going to look a bit, bit different. It's not like a shillelagh shouldn't look like it's been factory made. If it's a, a perfect ball right in the top, looking factory made, like there's no character in that. Like, you know, that's, 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 that's not, you know, that's not uh, a, a true shillelagh character. So today I just kind of want to kind of highlight, you know, the, 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 be careful of the, the imitation shillelagh sellers out there. Be careful of people who are selling, you know, illegal, I suppose, black market, black torn. Um, you know, be careful, you know, on marketplaces such as Facebook's a social network, you know, you have no rights there, like in terms of if you are um, selling.
like they are not a marketplace. I know they have a category called marketplace on it, but you know, they are, they're like sees themselves as not a utility. They're like, whatever goes on in Facebook's not our responsibility. Just like when you place a phone call, it's not our responsibility what you talk about on the phone. I think that that's kind of usually their, their stance from, from what I heard. Um, that time Zuckerberg was doing his, his interviews before Congress or something like that. But, um, so anyway, uh, support, the whole message of this, this thing at the start is support registered business, whether it's me or my competitors, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, if you see a, how, how it works with black turn is if you make a nice stick, it sells. And you know, when you are buying a stick, look out registered businesses, they can give you a receipt. You know, they should have no problem sending you a receipt. Like usually it happens automatic. When someone buys a stick from me, they get an automatic receipt. Sometimes because of small pump filters, they mightn't see the receipt or they mightn't get it. But all, every single transaction is recorded. A receipt is made. Um, you have your consumer rights um, with dealing with direct with, with a company. Um, I use couriers such as UPS and uh, DHL. I have cheaper rates than other places with these couriers because of the volume that I put through them. Like, you know, I see other other sellers, they're charging $50 to courier stick from Ireland to the US. Like I can do that for 30, 35, to between 30 to $35, I can courier a stick that will be there within, within a week. Um, usually it says like three days worldwide delivery, but realistically it takes about, about a week, you know, but like that's, that's splitting hairs, that's, that's not a big deal. So, um, uh, you know, take comfort in knowing that when you buy a stick at McCaffrey's Craft, um, you know, you can, you can see videos of me cutting the sticks. There's a, there's a video of me of carving the sticks. Um, you know, the, you, you, if you followed my channel for the last few years, which was a handful of you have, I think I have a, a nice core support in the uh, in the channel and it's great when they defend me too when when the odd person comes on being a little bit critical which is normal on youtube you can't do something on youtube without someone coming in saying well, yeah, yeah, you know the holding the finger up and shaking a type of brigade brigade but uh mm. Um, anyway, I have all of these plans, but it's just it's difficult to get the time to uh, to, to to record. Like usually, um, like today, I had to to go and get supplies. I had to get stuff for my printer, which wasn't working again. And I had to get paper, which isn't easy during during a pandemic. Um, I had to get that this desk as well. Just uh, you know, because the desk got. Yeah, the one I had had some issues with it as well. So it's um, you know, that that that's been my day so far and now it's Friday for the afternoon. Um the, I suppose for the afternoon today I'm going to straighten some sticks and for the next probably two hours, then feed the kids. Then after that again I have about four shillelaghs that I probably need to, to start putting a, a finish on. So I'll probably work on those four and then my plan for this weekend and usually I kind of like say announce my plans so that I can I can stick to them is uh this weekend I'm going to to make uh walking sticks I'm going to focus on that a lot so uh, I think I have about probably 55 sticks at the moment I kind of want in in my walking stick category so I want to get that up to about 100 you know by by the end of the month so um I'm going to like as I said straighten load of sticks today as as up, right up until bedtime and then uh, work on them over the weekend and hopefully I'll have new sticks online by Monday or if I fall behind, which I usually do, it could be Tuesday as well. So that, that's kind of the quick update uh, from me and uh, thanks for watching and uh, when talking too much, my cup of tea's got a bit cold, I'd say. All right, thanks for watching, bye-bye.